want to know how I've helped my clients secure over £600,000 worth of property deals without owning a single house, stick around because I'm going to show you the exact steps that you need to follow to set up a successful rent to rent business. These strategies have helped me quit my nine to five job and many of my clients. And if you follow these strategies, you can do exactly the same for yourself. So what exactly is rent to rent? In a nutshell, you rent a property at one price and then you rent it out at a higher price. A lot of people use this strategy to create reliable cash flow. But don't forget, you don't need to own any properties. For example, you might be able to rent a three bedroom house and turn the dining room into a living room and then rent the rooms out individually. A lot of people do that to maximize the income of that property by turning the dining room into a bedroom. Some people think rent to rent is illegal. It's subletting or it's too tricky, but that's actually not the case. Big Companies like Premier Inn use this exact business model. They rent their buildings on a long-term lease and then rent the rooms out night by night to individuals. Essentially, this is exactly what we are going to do as well. The key is to manage the risks properly. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how with starting your rent to rent business in eight steps. If it's the Airbnb model, serviced accommodation model that you're looking into, this strategy is perfect in areas with lots of short-term visitors, such as travelers and business people. But here is where the numbers matter. You're not just looking at expenses like rent and utilities. You've also got platform commission fees such as Airbnb and Booking.com and typically these can be around 18%. At 50% occupancy, you need a rate that covers rent, utilities and still leaves a profit. A lot of people calculate this incorrectly, which leaves them losing money. To succeed, you need to be smart with your pricing. Use platforms such as Property Market Intel, AirDNA to research the average nightly rate in your area and adjust that for high and low seasons. That way you can optimize that nightly rate and you're never left guessing. Data is your best friend when it comes to doing due diligence. And when you hit 75% occupancy rate in your Airbnb, that is where the magic happens. Because your fixed costs roughly remain the same, but your profits grow exponentially. This is where getting professional pictures, optimizing your listing, responding quickly to inquiries, that all makes the difference. And always be aiming for super host status, not just because of the ego side of it. Like I'm a super host, super host status puts you to the top of the list. It gives you better visibility and it helps fill those gaps in your occupancy. Finally, you'll want to automate your operations as much as possible. Communicating with guests upon check-in, the actual bookings itself, communicating with cleaners, making sure the dates are in their diary. All of this can be automated to free up your time because you don't want to replace your job with another job. Use tools like Hostfully and Guesty to streamline those operations and scale faster. You need to build solid foundations from property one so it allows allows you to scale. Don't build up many, many properties and then scale because it will collapse. Okay, let's dive into HMOs. This is house of multiple occupancy. This is student accommodation. This strategy works best where there's high demand for shared accommodation, like cities with universities, multiple hospitals, a lot of business going on, a lot of developments in the area, a lot of young professionals. But before jumping into that, you need to understand the regulations and the compliance of properties for that type of accommodation. First, check if that area falls under our Article 4. If it does, you'll need planning permission to convert this house to a HMO. Article 4 was introduced because the amount of HMOs that were going up, the councils needed to regulate it. But anyways, if you're unsure, always confirm it through the council regulations. Just type in Google your area HMO regulations and it will give you a clear idea whether this area is under Article 4. In most areas, properties with five or more bedrooms, you will need a HMO license to legally rent this property out to individuals. Here's a pro tip to avoid all of that, just target compliant HMOs, meaning properties that are already up and running and licensed, so we can hit the ground running without worrying about all the compliance side of things. Unless your area has high demand and doesn't require a license, it's better to just avoid the headache of converting a property, especially for a rent to rent basis. Let's break down a real example of the numbers of a five bed HMO. So typically this would cost around £2,200 a month in rent. Depending on area, you're typically going to get about £700 per room per month. So let's assume all rooms are doubles again this is just a typical example of a HMO so five bedrooms each tenant paying you 700 pound that's three and a half thousand pounds in revenue coming into your business every single month now let's factor in the costs of running a HMO let's allocate 600 pound a month in utilities cleaning and minor maintenance this brings your total expenses to 2,800 a month so with three and a half thousand pound revenue income from tenants take away the 2,800 in rent utilities and minor maintenance that leaves 700 pound solid profit every single month 
from one HMO that you do not own. Is it a guessing game? Absolutely not. You use spare room to check these rental rates and you test the actual market for demand before you even submit an offer to an agent because ultimately we don't want to waste agents time and burn that relationship we're trying to build and ultimately we do not want to be wasting landlords time either. All the while we need to still account for possible voids and minor maintenance costs. We want to keep our cash flow safe and healthy. So rent to rent HMO works really well in high occupancy areas such as cities with large universities, multiple hospitals, lots of business in the area. An area which has a constant demand for rooms. This strategy becomes extremely profitable when the rooms are occupied continuously with little downtime. Key here is knowing your market and ensuring there's constant demand for shared accommodation. Before diving into any deal, because it is very exciting landing these deals, spend time researching that area. Universities, hospitals, business hubs, they all need to be in that area to ensure high occupancy levels. Start looking for properties on Rymove, Gumtree and Open Rent. It's all in the numbers. You need to become data driven. So your rental income need to cover all expenses and your profit. So if you're going down the Airbnb route, use the tools such as Property Market Intel, DNA, Price Labs, to check the nightly rates and demand in that area. If you're going down the HMO route, be sure that the property is already licensed and is a compliant HMO. Do your market research through Spare Room. Test demand for that area before you make an offer on that property. Never rush into a deal. As humans, we're emotional creatures. We just want, want, want. You need to train yourself to be data driven. If the property does not stack, you do not go for it. This is where most people get nervous, but trust me, this is not as difficult as you may think. Here's what the big training companies won't tell you. Branding, marketing and positioning for each and every single property and landlord is the most vital part to getting deals over the line. Your pitch needs to be tailored based on the landlord's past experience and you need to discover that experience as well before pitching. So for example if the landlord's had bad tenants highlight how you'll maintain their property and how you'll guarantee rent and it's peace of mind for the landlord. So we focus on those elements and we repeat it throughout our pitch. Highly maintained, guaranteed rent. The pitch is the game changer. It's all about discovery phase and how you approach landlords. The same pitch won't work for every single landlord. When viewing properties, remember that property is a people business. Your offer needs to be backed by numbers, but more importantly, you need to build the trust with that landlord. The landlord will want to know whether they can trust you. This is their asset we're talking about. Not all about the money. This is a relationship you are binding into through a contract. We're going to want to personalize your offer. Make sure the landlord feels comfortable working with you. Here's a big one. I see time and time again the agent turns around and says yes offer accepted sends a contract over and it's an AST you then get a little bit confused go back to the agent saying this is an AST I don't understand then the agent says yeah we use this contract all the time for company lets never ever ever sign an AST agreement for a rent to rent property. You are the expert here. You need to educate the agent. Always use a commercial lease contract, a company let contract, a company let management contract, a rent to rent contract, something along those lines. Never an AST agreement. This will protect you legally as a limited company. We are not a tenant here. We are a limited company. So this protects you legally and gives you flexibility through break clauses that we need to have in place. Thus, if things don't go as planned. Managing your finances like a pro is crucial. You need to become data driven. Track all of your income and all of your expenses. Make sure you have a budget in place. I started my rent to rent business with just £5,000. This was for my first deal, but my first deal was actually three HMOs all in the same evening. So I only put £5,000 into my business account to start and I've never put any more. You use the same pot to reinvest, 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 build, build, scale. So you use the profits from that one to take on your second deal. Use the profits from both properties to take on two more deals and you just keep scaling should be one property on average every two months this is how you scale your business without any further cash injections start marketing your property before you even get the keys using platforms like airbnb on inquiries only booking.com and spare room this will allow you to either collect inquiries or collect potential tenant database so as soon as you're ready you can hit the ground running and get either tenants in the moment it's ready instead of get the property ready oh, we'll look for tenants no 
As soon as the property's ready, the next day, tenants move in. Get professional pictures, optimize your listings, and start generating that interest before it's ready to rent. Finally, systemize everything. Guest communication, cleaning schedules, and bookings can all be automated. The less time that you spend on day-to-day -day management, the more time you will have to grow your business. You wanna be working on your business, not in your business. And that essentially will lead you to running rent to rent as passive income. Some landlords will not be open to the idea at first, but it's all in the follow-up. It's not all about getting deals over the line on the first pitch. Just get in their database, put them in your database and then follow up. The amount of deals that I've taken on just from following up, I would say is the majority of my deals. So keep pushing, show them again and again the benefits of working with you. It all comes down to doing your proper due diligence. Do not take on a property if you haven't done thorough due diligence. There must be demand in that area and the relevant break clauses must be in contract so you can get out if worst case scenario that property doesn't perform. If you're short on cash or have poor credit, consider JVing with other people in your network or use a guarantor to secure the deal or sell the deal to an investor. Depends on the network you're already part of or you've created. So there's a few options if you're short on cash. Another way around it, if you've got poor credit and you're worried about referencing either through landlords and agents, if you've got a good amount of money to start this business, you can use cash as leverage. You know, instead of, okay, so we're not gonna pass referencing, but I can pay you six months rent up front. What I'm trying to say is it's never a dead end if you've got some things against you. So like I said earlier, always use the correct contract, never an AST agreement make sure those contracts are legally sound and the agent and landlord isn't asking you to do silly things within that contract upon ending the tenancy if you're not sure what you are signing then i encourage you do not sign it do not do this without a mentor without automating and systemization you'll quickly turn rent to rent into a full-time job and that would be at about four properties so invest in systems and automation so you can scale and not create a second job for yourself starting a rent to rent business can be very profitable remember i've helped clients secure over £600,000 worth of property deals using this exact strategy. So if you want to dive deeper on that and you want to learn a bit more, then I've left a free training link in the description. So just scroll down to the description after watching this video, click that link, put in your full name and email, and there'll be like a 15 minute training video to dive deeper on these tactics. We're really trying to grow the channel. It's not even at a thousand subscribers, which blows my mind. So if you are watching and you're a regular visitor, I would love if you could just subscribe, that'd be great. If you haven't checked out this playlist, go and watch it. This is tours of my mentees' properties, so it can't get any more real than that. So appreciate you guys being here, and I'll see you on the next video.